efficiency. Um, sorry for the delay. We've had a bit of a technical issues, but it seems to be okay now. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone that's logged in. Amir, Jonathan, Daniel, Yafit, a lot of Jonathans and Jonathans and Abraham. Um, we'll wait for others to join us, but in the meanwhile, you can use the chat to ask me questions and I'll try to answer them all at the end. I've also gotten questions from people when signed up, so I'll answer them at the end, okay? So a bit about myself. My name is Nati Eli Melech. Uh, I'm the CEO of uh, SEO Israel. It's a, we're a large SEO agency in Israel. We've been doing it for a long, long time. I'm mainly passionate about technical SEO, analytics, automation, and everything that's not title related. Uh, I will optimize call budget for beer, especially now. And I'm going to be talking to you about my experience as an SEO agency, as a CEO of an SEO agency, about the difficulties of this time, about difficulties our clients are facing, and the industry as a whole. So please feel free to ask me anything when uh, you feel you don't get an answer for a questions you have. The first thing I want you guys to remember is that SEO is still SEO. The rules haven't changed. Everything is still the same when we go about doing our job. But search trends on Google have changed quite a bit. Uh, as you all know, some businesses have reacted very poorly to this transition. Some people didn't even have a choice and their business can't operate. And basically uh, what we're trying to do is keep on working with the ones that are business as usual. Some businesses haven't been affected and help other clients to adapt and capitalize on the changes to the market. And uh, we also try to understand those that just can't operate. You know, what can a restaurant do at this time when legally uh, people aren't allowed to sit in restaurants or restaurants aren't allowed to open their doors to clients? Um, but uh, really the, the, the major issue we're having right now, and I'm sure all of you are having, is those clients that are basically, they can keep on operating, they can keep on operating, they can keep on doing the, the digital marketing efforts, they can keep on doing SEO, but fear has frozen them, scared, they're bunkering down, they're trying to save costs, and they're trying to freeze, you know, activities. And for a lot of them, that's a very, very, very bad idea. Because one thing we all need to understand, the, the biggest issue with this crisis, basically, is not the virus itself, the virus is horrible, people are, are physically affected, but the, the ability, people can't actually go to brick and mortar businesses. They're scared for their jobs, for their income, so they're, they're keeping their wallets very tight, they're not spending right now. Um, but we need to remember that things will change and they will probably change um, regardless of what we do, meaning the market will adapt Business will adapt. Um, consumers will go and buy and start ordering things again, but it will probably be, probably be a slow process. And what we want to do, the challenge is, is to take those clients, those customers, those websites that are frozen with fear and try to instill with them the notion that things will pick up. And when they pick up, we need to be there. We need to be there when people go back to search on Google. We need to, to, be, able to be there when consumers um, start spending again. And it's best to do it while their customers are, you know, their customers are, are still searching, but not really ready to purchase things right now. So we need to be patient and we need to plan for the months ahead. Some will experience a boom if they're brave enough. Um, I want you to look at the Google Trends for Tesco delivery. You all know that we've been using deliveries now. Um, people really, really, really need food. They need everything else. They just can't get out of the house. So a lot of businesses, especially e-commerce, will experience a boom if they know how to handle it, if they know how to adapt or innovate to achieve growth or even stay afloat, all right? Everyone knows that Zoom and other tools are experiencing growth, 
but I want to show you how other fields, other areas are experiencing unexpected growth as well. The shift for, to working from home for a lot of people has created new demand. So we've seen the demand for Zoom, right? But look at CrossFit at home, look at home printer, look at office chair. Who knew that office chair would be a trending search on Google? But all of these represent opportunities. They, were, they represent opportunities for new clients and they represent opportunities for upsell. They also represent opportunities for exposure because if I'm an e-commerce website that sells um, sports gear and gym gear, I, I would like to get to these people that are fit crazy and I want them to, to be able to train at home. So I'll try and sell them uh, multi-trainers. I'll try to, to, to sell them TRX. I'll try to, send them, to sell them other products that fit their new need. And the new need is to try and continue with our progress, with our life, but at home. Okay, so people need printers, people need office chairs, people need to work out at home. There are really, really, really a lot of opportunities here, though I fully understand that some businesses aren't able to operate at all due to or, or legal restrictions, due to movement restrictions, due to supply, a chain of supplies interruptions. A lot really can't operate, but some really can take advantage of the situation. Some will take time to recover because there's lower consumer demand, there are special uh, restrictions. If you, if you look at sport news, if you, you look about at restaurants, if you look at a lot of other businesses, their experience in a decline, that decline will probably go on and will gradually switch to an increase over time. Uh, but I wouldn't count on it being very quickly. We really don't know when this thing is going to be over. And those businesses need to think about new ways of, of producing revenue from their digital efforts. SEO will always be there. So even, even if it's sports news or restaurants are suffering right now, they need to remember that when things pick, things pick up, they still want to be first. They still want to get those users. They still want to get the traffic. So I wouldn't recommend freezing or not doing anything in the meanwhile because drastically freezing or limiting your spend, your digital spend, is like trying to, trying to save time by stopping your hand watch. It seems like you're saving money. It seems like you're saving time. But eventually, you need to be there when things pick up and it will cost you because your competition isn't probably as dormant and some people will still keep on fighting. And I suggest your clients or you do the same. I really want to talk about how we deal with frozen or scared clients. I'm talking about that segment of clients that do have potential or at least aren't suffering as much from the situation, but are solid frozen with fear. They're bunkering down, they're trying to save money and how we and you should handle them as an agency or as an SEO. <coughs> First of all, this is most important. I know you're a business as well, we're a business as well. Everyone are looking out for income, everyone needs money, right? But I implore you, don't stick to your contracts. This is not the time for it. Meaning, if a client needs to freeze or suspend your service, don't fight over contracts, don't take them to court, because when things are over, they'll remember if you were there for them or if you put up a fight. I can tell you from my own experience that suppliers that didn't try and even understand the situation are, are basically crossed over from me. I, I wouldn't return to using them when things are, are better. So be there for them now, so they'll be there for you later. Don't burn bridges and try to mitigate the damage as much as you can, right? What I suggest is sometimes if you're able to go easy on the payments, maybe we'll do SEO now and you pay me three or four months from now. As long as we keep activities ongoing, as long as we keep working on our rankings, as long as we work now to produce revenue later. 
some of these clients won't listen because they're saying, okay, right now I have a problem. You're not my only supplier. I'm sending all of my workers home. And you can't really talk to them in this situation. It's very emotional. People are scared. So what I suggest is you keep track of organic traffic and work for an incline. Once you see that consumer demand is up or any demand on Google is up, that's the time to talk to the client, to talk to the customer, tell them the demand is back. We need to, to get back to work. We're losing time. And SEO is a long-term effort. What we lose now, we won't be able to make up later. I also suggest using Google Trends to detect recovery or an increasing demand related to your client's line of business. Uh, I've shown you the data from Google Trends. You've seen how home printer is in a huge, huge incline, just like um, CrossFit from home and just like Zoom. So always keep up with Google Trends. Try to see if there are opportunities to strike or if there's a recovery or increase in the trend uh, related to your client's websites. That's the time to talk to them, to them, to say, we have an opportunity here. Things are picking up. Let's get work. I also suggest that you suggest, as an SEO, uh, focusing on future rising demand or new areas or topics previously unexplored. You know, If I sold printers to businesses, maybe I need to switch over and, and sell printers to, to homeowners. Maybe I need to create a bundle. Maybe I need to offer a different service that's adapted to the new situation instead of closing shops and closing my doors. The issue of cost saving is, of course, on everyone's mind, from businesses to employees, because no one is, is a lot of people aren't secure about their future income, about their jobs. Unemployment is on the rise, and it's on the rise globally. So people really are insecure. As business owners, try to save costs, but don't try to trim the fat too much that you reach the bone, because in the end, we want to be able to pick things up. We want to have a team that actually know what they're doing when this crisis is over. So I suggest you keep your talent employees. If you're even considering firing people or letting people go in the meanwhile and think things pick up, remember, your talent employees are important. In SEO, human knowledge and experience is the real asset. It's not a tool. It's not a tracking software. It's not anything else but human talent. So try and keep it. Don't overstinge. Don't try to cut where it's important. Also, what I did and what a lot of people are doing is negotiate with, the, with landlords. If you have an office, reach out, tell them. For, uh, for example, in Israel, most offices can't operate right now legally. We're not allowed to send a large amount of employees to our offices. Also, open tickets with different tools or suppliers or uh, SaaS services. Ask for a temporary discount. Most will be happy to oblige. A lot of them, a lot of, of, of our suppliers that have reached out to happily gave us a discount. Did we need the discount to survive? Of course not. But if we can save wherever possible, we can keep our talented employees employed. So open tickets, ask for a discount, then understand we're all in the same boat. Don't be too proud to do it. This is a tough situation and we don't know how long it's going to last. And the most important thing I can tell you to do right now is move manual routines and tasks to automation. Basically, if you're going to let people go, you're going to very quickly understand what are the things they're doing um, daily, what are the tests that, that need to be done, what are the routines, and you'll, show, you'll soon find out that these are things that repeat themselves, and they're kind of dumb operations, and you don't need to think about uh, the task itself when you're doing it, and all of these are good candidates for automation. Yes, you need to cut costs, and you need to cut maybe some of your staff. Try replacing a lot of that staff's work with automation. I'm not talking about get rid of your, your, your staff. I'm talking about in these trying times, focus them on what's important. And automation is a different entire subject. I'm not going to get into it, 
but I hugely recommend trying out Zapier or Integromat and taking a lot of the repetitive work out of employees' hands and into bots and automations that, it, that can take care of that. So we've saved some costs, we've talked to clients, um, and we do have less time to work now if we have less helping hands. What I suggest is just like we tell our customers, invest in something that will pay off later, okay? Work on your, on your infrastructure, PBNs, other di digital assets, maybe create more websites for your agency uh, so they create leads you can say later. Um, adjust and optimize products and queries that are on the rise. I've shown you the example for printer before. Maybe you need to adjust the title to a home printer. Maybe you need to start ranking for that instead of other, other you know, very close variations because people are searching more for another variant. Uh, I would also suggest rescheduling big future changes or upgrades um, that were supposed to happen in the future, like overhauling a major section on, on a website, doing code repairs, adding functionality, uh, doing a lot of content work, all of these huge projects that usually take time to plan, that's the time to do it. Um, why that's the time to do it? First of all, um, I'll give you an example for one of our clients. It's a, it's a big, big, big travel website. Okay, we're talking about millions of page views. It's a huge website. And we've been doing an, a, a, a gradual up, upgrade of the website over time. We've doing it for about four months now. And one of the things we really, really, really uh, were afraid of during the upgrade is that we're going to lose important traffic because it's the holidays. It's soon the holiday season in Israel. Um, spring, summer is coming up. It's a lot of relevant traffic. And we were, were afraid that making a big move will impact us because big, big changes can sometimes uh, manifest themselves in uh, organic traffic drops. So right now, that's, there's nothing to lose. There's not a lot to lose. That's the time to make those big changes, those scary changes, those changes that usually take a long time. People are, are more free now. They have more time. And you're not going to lose as much traffic as you would have if you did it when times were, you know, normal. So talk to your clients, do infrastructure work, build PBNs, build more digital assets, and do the big things now. Also a tip, links are cheaper now. So, and any links you, you're going to get, um, no matter the means, is going to basically affect the rankings, you know, um, a few weeks from now, a couple of months from now, it depends. So you can do that work now and see those in clients for customer websites now. Okay, work on your infrastructure, work on clients infrastructure and do all of those complicated, risky projects now. <coughs> a bit for businesses or clients, um, I would really suggest keeping the, the SEO spice flowing means don't freeze your work because as we've said, SEO is long-term. What you do now manifests itself. It could manifest itself in a few months from now when all of this is over. Um, so keep on working, work on renewed or new demand for products now for when the crisis is over. So try and think of what people we need when the crisis is over, because I can tell you one thing. I don't, when, I don't know when it's going to be over. I know one thing. Things will change, okay? The paradigm has changed. More people are working from home. A lot of small businesses have kind of been forced to move to digital, you know? Uh, more e-commerce websites are up. People are starting to, to learn that, that, you know, working from home isn't a bad thing. I expect a rise in working from home. So like we talked about um, home printer and other stuff, I think we will never get back to normal. I think those queries, those searches will, will keep trending up, up to a certain point, but they will never get back to being as low as they have been before, because I think when this is over, more people will be working from home. Um, so start working on new stuff now, make those long awaited changes to your website 
Now, development costs are down, lean costs are down, creative costs are down. Everything costs less now because it's a crisis, so make use of it. Um, I also suggest that you keep awareness while the competition is dormant. This is, isn't strictly SEO because where you need to understand that most brands are experiencing a, dro a drop in branded searches. SEO works, you know, it, it's, it's pool. Um, so when the demand is low, I can't really pick up demand for a brand by doing SEO actions. But I can use Google My Business, I can use paid campaigns. I can't use. I can use other channels to keep um, my my awareness up. Because if all of my other competition is dormant, they're not advertising. Yeah, they're not advertising. They're not doing anything. That's the time to strike. Because because when things pick up, the consumer will remember my brand, not my competitor's brand. So this is a golden opportunity, and I'll give you a hint. Why it's so important? Because right now, right now, prices on the different paid channels are like they've been, never been for years. It's very low right now. It isn't SEO, but it will help your SEO efforts. So I highly recommend doing it, keeping the awareness up. Right now, if you don't have anything to sell, don't sell it. Just let people keep seeing your brand and hope for them to remember you when the time is right. Uh, biz small businesses that don't have e-commerce activities yet, that's the time, okay? As I said, everything is cheaper now. Consumers, I think e-commerce is the, the field that will greatly benefit from this change, from this change in paradigm. So most businesses will move uh, to e-commerce. Uh, they will adapt e-commerce capabilities. And if you haven't done so, I really, really, really um, think you should start uh, on thinking about how to approach this. Um, there's no better time, literally. So consumers are trying to save money. Yeah, they don't really want to spend right now. You don't want to spend right now. You're consumers yourselves and you're keeping a tight wallet. As a business, uh, we advise our customers to adjust their offerings, okay? Let's say our, our customers don't sell, you know, um, masks, they don't, they don't sell anything COVID-19 related, but they are trying to sell their usual products or services. What I'm saying is don't try to sell your usual products, your usual offerings. Adjust them to the situation. Offer affordable shipping, even if you haven't done shipping before, start doing it, okay? I know of toy stores that start, started shipping to homes because, because parents are cooped up to, with their children at home. They need something to keep them busy. So all of a sudden, small toy stores starting doing shipping, providing shipping to their customers. Uh, my, my local grocer uh, allows me to, to order uh, using uh, WhatsApp, and I get my order. Why? Because they don't, they don't have an e-commerce system yet, but they improvised. If they didn't have the ability to order using WhatsApp, I wouldn't have ordered from them. So even when things aren't perfect, even when you don't have the right infrastructure, you can improvise and find a way to get your product to your customer. I would also suggest creating product bundles, especially for work from homes. Um, like if you sold electronic gear or office supplies, I would create a bundle for printer plus webcam plus microphone plus paper for the printer. Try to think of what people actually need, what you need, because you're doing it right now uh, when they work from home. Not just for work purposes, but for their everyday activities at home. We're cooped up at home. We're doing it for 24 hours, a lot of us. So we need to get away from the kids. We need something to distract them. We need proper tools. We need someone to ship things to us when we did that didn't need shipping before. Keep your head open and start delivering new solutions to your customers based on the situation. I also I would also try and offer pay now get later sales. Uh, I don't think it will work for the travel industry right now, but even if you have a supply, a, a chain of supply disruption, if you can't 
actually get the product to the customer now, what I would suggest is a, a pay now, get later sale with deep discount, for example, order now, get it in two months and you'll save um, 40%. For example, one thing never changes, that's parenthood and birth. Babies are going to keep on being born and in nine months, I assure you, a lot of babies will, will be born. So certain areas will experience a boom. What you can do is start selling now because a baby's due date isn't going to change because of the corona crisis. If, if you're, you're making like baby furniture, sell it now. You know the date. Parents will still need to buy these things. They can't avoid it. So offer it now. Give them a big discount. Keep your cash flow healthy. And they um, get the discount that otherwise they wouldn't get until Black Friday, for example. It works on certain products that consumers really, really have to buy. Okay, um, a baby coat isn't a luxury product. It's needed. So try and sell it now instead of competing with all the rest later. I would also say that you need to work on growth for your mailing lists, um, your wish lists, and waiting lists. If you can provide it now, make people or, or, or encourage people to, to leave their details now. You'll get back to them later using email marketing, using notifications. So all of your organic traffic, if it's not going to sell on your e-commerce website, for example, try and, 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 and navigate and, and channel the traffic to a place when you can monetize later. So all of these waiting lists and mailing lists are perfect for that. I would also suggest offering online alternatives to your services. Uh, if you do courses, suggest online courses. Uh, if you're a consultant, how about video consultancy? Um, if you're an academic institute, offer remote study. There are a lot of things and these are chances to evolve. This is a worldwide pilot about work from home and we're a part of it and we can either capitalize on the new um, opportunities we can, we can also go about on our business as usual, or we can stop everything. And when everything picks up, we have nothing and we need to start over again. So think hard about what people actually need right now and what they're going to need in a few months and maybe later on. Try and sell it now or try and get them into your system now so you can sell it to them later. I also, I also think that people really, really, really need to update the Google My Business listing. Um, why demand for brand is low? Yeah, branded searches are quite low right now. Uh, Google My Business is still a great way to communicate sales and changes due to the crisis directly to customers. Update your open, opening hours. Let people know you're still in business. Upload pictures of the staff or of your hangouts or your video conferences to your, to your Google My Business. I can tell you that this helps. Okay, um, post things, let customers know you make deliveries, even in the business name if you have to. Google allows that now. Um, publish products and deals directly in Google My Business. You need everything possible to get them to click on your property and to contact you now. So if you have a pay now, get later with deep discount sale, Google My Business is exactly the place to promote it. Um, that's that's what I think about actually handling the situation SEO wise. I can tell you SEO is still SEO, but we really, really, really don't know when, it, when this thing is going to end, when people are going to wake up, when consumers are going to start consuming and where businesses are going to get back to work, even gradually. Until then, I, I highly recommend that you learn how to work in teams. Uh, we're a company with about between 25 and 30 employees. Um, of course, that changes over time. And we've been forced to work remotely. So luckily for us, what we did is a week before all the restrictions began, we sent everyone home without changing the schedule and told them, you work from home now for this day, for today only. Uh, we found out what's missing, what's the gear missing, what the problems are, and we took care of them before we had to work from home. So right now I'm going to share with you uh, a few of the tools I use, we use 
to be able to communicate properly and a few a few tips. If you have any questions, feel free to use the chat uh, to ask me and I'll answer it shortly. So what we do is we use Microsoft Teams or Zoom for meetings. We use Microsoft Teams for internal communications because it works well with our Exchange server. And we use Zoom for external uh, meetings with clients, with new prospects, with suppliers, with people outside of the organization. It works very, very well. And we were actually surprised how well it works. I think a lot of people would consider moving back to the office when it's done. I'm not sure everyone will move back to offices. I really think this is making a huge change on how we work from home. Um, you can also use Hangouts for internal com communications. What we like to do to keep the staff motivated and to keep everyone actually, you know, feeling that they're working in a team, we conduct two dailies every day. Um, each morning, there's a daily video conference with everyone in the team for up to 30 minutes. We share what everyone's working on, our challenges, even same challenges, and strategy for everyone, if, including our HR manager, office manager, accounting, sales, project managers, SEOs, PPC, whatever. Everyone as a team is on the daily. Everyone is sharing their hardships and their winnings. Uh, and we do it each morning for 30 minutes. And at the end of the day, a short daily to sync up what we've been up to uh, and news about the developing situation. Um, you can use whatever system you want, but these are the ones I use and know that work well. Um, a little bit about how to manage work uh, in a situation like this. I suggest you define tasks to be completed for each day, okay? Don't let people free roam. For each employee, for each, each staff member, define what needs to be done today. At the daily, end of day daily, go over these things. See if everything's done. See if there's any difficulties, any hardship, and take care of that. Use time tracking for tasks. Most project managements allow this. Now, we use time tracking not to spy on, on our employees. We use Monday, by the way, with the time tracking, and we also use Rike with time tracking. We do it to find out where time is mostly invested. At this time, you need to invest the time on clients and on everything else according to the impact on the business. So track time, it, it takes getting used to. We've been doing it for years now, so it hasn't been, been a big change for us. And analyze where time is being spent. Uh, define new routines while working from home or working away. Basically, that means everyone needs to know their, day, their, their daily schedule. We start with the daily, then we do this and this and this. At noon, we do that. At the end of the day, we have another daily. Create a structure for them. People need structure. This is also the time to stop using offline office apps, okay? No Word, no Excel, nothing on your actual computer move to the cloud, move to ones that allow collaboration if you haven't done so. Um, this is especially important now, but if you're not using cloud-based um, office apps, you're, you're, you're way ahead, behind on the curve and you actually need to keep up. Move whatever you can to the cloud, move to SaaS services, cloud storage. We've even uh, moved tools to a virtual machine so any everyone can actually log in from their home and use it. Don't rely on the hardware you have at the office because if you aren't at home yet, chances are that some businesses will not be able to send their employees to the office. So I suggest moving everything you can to the cloud. Um, this is basically how I see things and approach things during this crisis. Uh, I would say that no one, no one, no one knows how this thing will evolve. Yeah. But we all know that even crises like this are eventually over. World War I ended, World War II ended. This is our World War III, but it will end much sooner. And I expect things to start picking up in a while. In the meantime, I want to answer questions that have been sent to me uh, when registering for the webinar. For some of them, I really don't have good questions because I don't have an eight ball, a crystal ball, I'm not a magician, but we'll try to draw from experience. Um, I remind you, this is a place to ask more questions. Um, 
And when I, I'm done with these questions, I, I'll move on to the questions you ask in the chat. So one person asked how to face a decrease in branded searches. Um, as I said earlier, you can't really face a decrease in branded searches um, in the way you think, because you can't really affect branded searches inside of Google. What you can do is use other digital um, channels or even radio. Um, but facing a decrease in branded searches is just like normal SEO. Imagine you're doing SEO for a, a website that doesn't have a strong brand. You need to work on general terms, on long terms, but you can't really do anything about branded searches going down um, because that's up to the market right now. Um, does this affect all businesses? That's the next question. I think some businesses, as I said, have bloomed. Okay, deliveries, uh, anything related to work from home, um, online tools, some businesses have really bloomed. Um, some have been affected in a negative way, uh, I would say most. And I think that the businesses that haven't really suffered or haven't felt the impact of this crisis yet will soon feel it because when, when the crisis gets you know, to the consumer, Almost every business is affected. I wouldn't be, um, I, I would keep my guard up because I don't think, don't know how things will change. Uh, next questions. Which tools do you find the most efficient ones for monitoring your, team, your team's work? So we have an, a, a very big team. We actually use two um, project management softwares. We use Monday, we use Rike. Um, Rike is more enterprise. They both allow us to keep track to keep track um, of our time. I, I'll show you a screen. I'll open my Monday screen and I'll show you how we keep track of time. I'll show the, the screen with you in a couple of seconds. One second, we're waiting for it to update. Okay, so basically now what you're seeing um, is Monday's, can you see it? Great. Uh, Monday's ability to track time. This is, says time tracking. Everything we need to do is divided to tasks, and whenever someone works on it, we start measuring time. When there's, when we see that uh, a lot of, of time is spent on things that aren't very productive, we usually put a stop to it or try to redirect efforts. So most of the project management tools nowadays have built-in time tracking abilities. That's up to you which one you want to use. I wouldn't recommend using software that tells you when people have been on Facebook or which website they've used. There's, there's so much you can do and track without actually making your staff feel underappreciated and that you don't trust them. So track it in order to improve, not in order to know what everyone's doing from home. Um, about maintaining a work atmosphere when everyone is working from home, um, do what I told you, uh, conduct at least one daily each day. Have everyone go on video, even if they're not talking, have everyone go on video, at least say good morning, um, talk to people, talk about what you plan on doing for the rest of the day, encourage other people to talk about it. So you can keep team spirits up and still feel like you're working as a team, even though everyone is stuck at home. Um, that's basically my take on it. Um, there's not much more you can do. And I have one last question. Uh, question, sorry. Which schema markup works in Google Israel? It, it doesn't have anything to do with this crisis, but I'll answer it anyway. So Israel, um, as some of you may know, uh, is a bit different. Google is a bit different. Most features and schemas don't um, 
don't manifest themselves as rich results in Google Israel, but some do. The ones that usually do are, of course, uh, breadcrumbs. We're talking about um, images in search results. We're talking about FEQ schema. We're talking about product schemas. Um, but there are a lot of elements that we don't see in Google Israel. For example, how to schemas. I don't see them in Google Israel. Uh, AMP related elements aren't, don't work as good uh, as well as in, in Israel. Uh, but things are changing. More and more schemas are released. More and more of them are spreading out to the rest of the countries that aren't United States. Uh, and that's basically my answer for that. I love schemas. I, I really, I really try to keep up with all the new ones being released. Uh, I'm a huge fan of marking your data and making Google understand it. Uh, and if that uh, manifests itself in a in a SERP position that gets higher CTR, all the better. Um, those are the questions I got so far. Does anyone have any other questions you want me to answer about the situation or SEO? Great. So I think I think I've answered all the questions. Um, thank you all for coming today and being there. If you have any more questions, um, you can reach out to me uh, in a private message and I'll try to help out. Uh, stay safe, be well, and don't be too scared to continue working and to push your clients to achieve um, new objectives. Um, and if you freeze, your clients will freeze. So be brave, uh, push on and stay safe. Thank you everyone.